Good evening. My name is Chris Hoonan, and I work in informatics. What is informatics? Well, it's a better name for computer science. That's what informatics is. <laughs> so, working in informatics, I meet a lot of funny characters. Backslash, ampersand, semicolon, <laughs> bracket, on and on and on. So, we, we study systems that process and communicate information. That's clear enough, right? Information, informatics, no? There's only one tiny problem. Nobody really knows what information actually is. Sure, we, we sort of know how to use it. We know how to measure how much of it there is. We even know how to compress and decompress it. Everybody knows zipping and unzipping, right? Yeah? <laughs> Unzipping makes things bigger. <laughs> Just don't do it in public, please. <laughs> right, so in my field, we take a step back. We don't look at the, the information in individual single systems, but instead we look at the information that flows between them. And we typically give our systems names, just to keep us company. <laughs> papers, they usually call Alice and Bob. <laughs> it's nice to have friends. <laughs> Even if they're imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> now, by now you might have noticed that my first language isn't English. Like, so my native tongue is actually um, category theory abstract nonsense. <laughs> Unfortunately, that sometimes means I get confused for a terrorist. <laughs> now, I didn't make an effort tonight, but it doesn't help already that academics sometimes dress in sandals and flowing robes and have beards. <laughs> but imagine you overhear two of them at an airport on their way to a conference mumbling to each other, something like this. Our identity is discrete, so it's safe to assume there's a terminal object in this well power category. <laughs> Yes, but remember, to get a good section, you really have to slice through that skeleton. <laughs> oh gosh, this, this faithfulness is fully going to test my limits. I don't want to end up in two cells. <laughs> no, no, stay natural now, don't lose your nerve, just pass to that annihilator and use your killing ball. <laughs> so that was actually an honest conversation about category theory. <laughs> Saying it out loud, I, I start to understand why people sometimes look at me funny. <laughs> Alright, so nobody knows what information is, but that's not bad enough for me. I study quantum information. That's information at the, in systems of very small scales, of quantum scales. Now mind you, that doesn't mean that the information tells you very little. As all of Westminster knows by now, um, there's very important information in the small print. <laughs> so, the, the problem with quantum information is you can't easily separate systems. Um, in quantum mathematics, Alex, Alice and Bob are usually entangled. So that means something like... Yeah, it's a funny word, entangled. <laughs> So that means something like, if you look at Alice, you already know what Bob is doing, just without looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> so you get jokes like this. Alice and Bob walk into a bar. The barman asks, are you two together? And Alice says, together? We are inseparable. You already know what Bob is doing now, right? Bob is, ah, double whiskey, please. <laughs> Okay, so you can't easily separate systems from each other, and in particular, you can't isolate the system you want to look at from its environment, from the rest. Um, so if you just want to talk to Alice on her own, it's, there's a, like a, a lot of voices in your head talking over you. Um, wait, did I just say you have to be crazy to study quantum informatics? <laughs> so also this, that you can't separate systems, means Alice and Bob are not real. I like them very much, they're my dear friends, but deep down I know they're just fictional characters, some sort of fictional parts of a whole. It's more like they're split personalities inside a single mind. Oh dear, I'm not making it better now, am I? I promise you it all makes sense, I'm not crazy. Um, but honestly, you have to be a bit crazy in this quantum world, because otherwise your intuition is just plain wrong. For example, there's something called the distributive law of logic that we all agree on in everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> I do, at least. Uh, 
Yeah. It's something like this. A file for your tea, sorry, a biscuit with a choice of coffee or tea. You expect to get either a biscuit with tea or a biscuit with coffee. Right? And rightfully so. You can't mess with this British tea and biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> but that ain't necessarily so in quantum logic. What you would get is a biscuit, all right, but a superposition of coffee and tea. That might sound like a good deal to you, but it really isn't. <laughs> it's like there's two thermoses of tea and coffee, but you don't know which is which. And the only way to find out which is which is to pour yourself a cup of one of them. But once you make your choice, there's no going back. And you have to. Um, pretend that that's what you wanted all along, to keep up appearances. <laughs> it's a bit like Boris Johnson. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, now, I'm not sure about your place of work, but at least in my department, even if you pour yourself a cup from one single thermos, there's some uncertainty left. Right? Is this, <laughs> is this dark, brown, grey sludge in your cup, is it strong tea? Is it weak coffee? Is it toffee? <laughs> is it key? <laughs> That's just not a very super position to be in. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so nobody knows what information is in the message, and nobody even knows what systems are. Right? And yet, and yet, undeniably, there's something like information flow going on. So let me end with another example. This one's called commitment. <laughs> you might think you know what commitment is, but you're wrong. <laughs> let me tell you. Suppose you're a bookie, and I would like to place a bet. I just don't want to tell you what horse yet, because I'm afraid you're going to fix the race. So what we can do instead is the following. I write my prediction on a piece of paper, put it in a safe, I lock the safe, I give the safe to you, but I keep hold of the key myself. And so now I'm committed, I can't change what's inside the safe anymore. But at the same time, you can have a look inside the safe yet and fix the race. So after the race is done, I can give you the key, you can open the safe and check my bet. Right? So that's a commitment protocol. At least that's what we call it in informatics. I'm sure the bookies have another term for it, probably something horribly technical, like party pooper, kill <laughs> joy, spoil sport. However, if we use quantum pieces of paper, um, I can put something in the safe that's entangled with something I keep. So it's like myself and the inside of the safe are not really separate systems, and I can change what's inside after the fact. So all I have to do now is wait for the race to end, look who the winner is, do my quantum entanglement stuff, and hey presto, I have the winning bet. So that's my golden tip for you tonight. <laughs> that's how you win at the races, you use your know, quantum entanglement. Okay, so that's me done. <laughs> I hope I got some information across to you tonight. If not, I can always change it later. <laughs>